Most big galaxies contain big black holes. Not just big, supersized, with millions of times the sun's mass. Some of these black holes are actively devouring gas. This drives particle jets that can spew matter millions of light years into space, and it also makes the holes a source of penetrating, or hard, X-rays. At these energies, the sky glows in every direction, even far away from bright sources. Astronomers have long suspected that active, supermassive black holes in galaxies were responsible, but they just couldn't find enough of them to account for the X-ray glow, especially the peak of the energy spectrum. Now, astronomers using NASA's SWIFT satellite confirm that a largely unseen population of black hole-powered galaxies is out there. There are so many that scientists say they might fully account for the cosmic X-ray background. What emission we detect from an active black hole is a function of how we see it, whether we're looking face-on and into one of its jets, or viewing it from the side through the disk of gas and dust that surrounds it. The brightest active black holes, which include quasars and blazars, are those we see face-on. But as the viewing angle increases, the surrounding disk absorbs increasing amounts of radiation. Astronomers have always assumed that many active galaxies were oriented edgewise to us, but because the disk of gas smothers most of their X-rays, these sideways black holes just weren't detected. And that's where SWIFT comes in. Since 2004, the satellite's Burst Alert Telescope has been building up the largest, most sensitive X-ray map of the sky. Using these data, astronomers found that the most heavily absorbed galaxies create the energy peak in the cosmic X-ray background. What does it all mean? When the universe was about half its present age, about 7 billion years ago, galaxies crashed together more frequently, and these collisions produced gas-rich galaxies with heavily obscured black holes. The SWIFT survey shows that galaxy mergers helped activate these black holes by feeding them torrents of fresh gas. The new findings are consistent with the idea that the X-ray background peaked around this time, when our own galaxy was young and before our solar system was born. Welcome back. I'm Lisa, and this week on NASA Now, we're going to learn more about one of our newest cosmic neighbors. But before we get to that, let's find out what else is happening at NASA Now. <laughs> NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope has unveiled an unknown structure centered in the Milky Way. The feature spans 50,000 light years and may be the remnant of an eruption from a supersized black hole at the center of our galaxy. The object looks like a pair of bubbles extending above and below our galaxy's center. Each lobe is 25,000 light years tall, and the whole structure may only be a few million years old. Now let's take a look back at the past. We have booster ignition and... July 23, 1999, Space Shuttle Columbia was launched with the 55,000-pound Chandra X-ray Observatory on board. This was the heaviest payload a space shuttle had ever lifted. The Chandra X-ray Observatory is the most powerful and most sensitive X-ray telescope ever launched. It has given astronomers and astrophysicists the ability to see objects previously not seen, expanding their insight into the cosmos. Black holes. What are they and why are scientists so interested? You've probably seen movies or heard reports, but what's the real story on these mysterious phenomena we call black holes? Here to fill us in with an overview of black holes and his team's recent discovery is Dr. Daniel Patnod, astrophysicist at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. My name is Daniel Patnod. People call me Dan. I'm an astrophysicist for the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. Unlike the Hubble Space Telescope, which looks at the universe in optical light, which is the light that you and I see on a daily basis, the Chandra X-ray Telescope is looking for X-rays that come from the very hottest and most energetic things in our universe, such as black holes, colliding galaxies, exploded stars, anything that produces very energetic processes. What was discovered recently was that supernova 1979C, which was a supernova that exploded in the year 1979, and it was the third supernova, we found that the X-ray emission from this particular object remained remarkably constant over the 30 years of its lifetime. The fact that it was constant meant that there was probably a black hole at the center of this supernova, and it was sort of hoovering up some of the material that was around it. If this were just a supernova that had exploded into the surrounding material, its brightness would have decreased with time. It 
what we're looking at in this particular case is the youngest nearby black hole. There are several reasons why this particular discovery is important. The first is we know that stars explode, and we know that when a star explodes, particularly when a, a star collapses on itself and then explodes, there's two types of things that can form. The first is called a neutron star. The second thing that can form is a black hole. And what happens then is that this very small object, this neutron star, continues to be crushed under the weight of the collapsing star. And what happens is the neutron star becomes a black hole. In the movies, black holes are portrayed either to sort of vacuum up everything in their vicinity, and also they're often portrayed to act as time machines. And this is a misconception. Black holes do not actively go around hoovering up the material that's, that's nearby. In fact, what happens is you cross this thing called the event horizon. And once you cross the event horizon, there's no chance of escape because not even light can escape a black hole. Now, as far as, as time machines, black holes also don't act in that way. Something does happen around a black hole, though, which might be akin to time travel. Say that you and I were in our spaceship and we were orbiting happily around a black hole, and then you got into your, your space capsule and got closer to the black hole and orbited it for a different amount of time and then came back. The fact that the, the gravity around the black hole is so high, it actually distorts both space and time. We may have had the exact same time on our clocks when you left, but by the time you get back, your clock is going to be much slower than mine. And some people can infer this as time travel, but that's, that's not true. If we look in our own galaxy, we see lots and lots of things that we think are black holes. The problem is, is that we don't know how old any of these black holes in our own galaxy are. They all have to be quite old because black holes are formed in the deaths of stars, but the particular black holes that we observe in our own galaxy are not associated with any stellar remnants. So that means that they all must be at least 100,000 years old. In this particular case, in 79C, we're actually looking at something just when it was born. So we're looking at, at basically an infant black hole. And it, this gives us the opportunity to follow how it evolves as it ages. Did you know that distances in space are measured in units called light years? A light year is defined as the distance light travels in one year. Since light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second, one light year is equal to 9.46 trillion kilometers. Driving a car at that distance of 60 miles per hour would take 44 and a half million years. Now you know. Now it's time to check out what's up. Take a look at the composite image shown on the screen. If scientists' interpretation are correct, SN 1979C is the nearest location where the birth of a black hole has been observed. Thank you. 